Hey there, Angie M. Just thought we could take a moment, do a good old fashioned planner play. And yes, I have changed planners yet again because my planner ADD kicked in. No, actually, I think, and I'm just going to zoomy zoomy out just a touch here. Give us some more room to see some stuff. So I did pull the pens that I'm using right now just so you guys could see them. And what factors in here is just what works with pocket size planning. So I've got my pocket planner here. I have the highlighters that I've been using. I just like this pink. It is quite neon from Tombow. And I'll just, just grab a card here. So how this guy, not Tombow, this is a mild liner, guys. Ah, can you tell it's been a long day? So quite neon. I like the way it writes. I actually prefer the mild liner brush tips to the regular highlighters that they have just because I find it works better. Their highlighters, I just the ones that I have had, I have had some issues with getting the kind of line that I like. And the brush tip lets me choose. So a little bit, a little bit of a difference there. I've got this DS805S. I apologize. I don't know who the manufacturer is. I did not look back on Cloth and Paper's website for their blogs on prior pen kits. I like the color with this particular planner and I like this particular highlighter as well. So that guy is staying. I've got my uni pin, which I always have otherwise you could have just a fine point sharpie works just fine then i have these two zebra sarasa clips that are supposed to be kind of an ombre effect the purple in terms of ombre effect works less than the pink the pink works better however interestingly which you'll see in a minute this guy looks primarily purple this guy looks primarily blue. So I'll start with the pink. And just show you there, you can see where a little bit of orange comes through. You have to write quite a bit to actually get the effect. And that guy is very blue. I find that to me, it just seems like the colors are mixing together a lot more than being an ombre, unless I'm doing a ton of writing all at once and then it seems to work better. So I think what happens is, is the ink is settling when you're writing in short bursts and it's blending together, that's all. Then I've got three of these M&G pens. These also came from, I believe all three of these are from cloth and paper boxes or the burgundy and the green might be and then I might've picked this up from their website separately, but I'm pretty sure these are all from sub boxes. These are 0 0.5, but the tip, just the tip, just the tip. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. I'm just looking off camera. So both of these are 0 0.5. This is the Sarasa. This is the M&G. Let me see. Can you see that there is just a little bit of a difference, a little bit more narrowing to the M&G? It's ever so slight that it's still a 0 0.5, but it, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a hair finer. Then other 0.5s that I have. These are also very rich. The pigment is quite beautiful and they're comfortable to write with. These are some of my favorite pens and this particular shade matches my planner. <laughs> so that is why that guy is there. All right. And then I am working through my squares. I've got Cloth and Paper's Chai Lime Fresco, which I really like, but I have other pens that I like more. So the pens. Let's slow it down for a second. Other flags that I like more. I also, literally, I also have sitting out cloth and paper French 75. These guys actually look very nice palette wise with the planner itself. That's a thing for me. Matching my planner is a thing. It, it just, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. So that's, that's really where I'm coming from on that. All right, so let's get into this. I have been changing up, sorry, if I move it too much, then you guys see my pants. So, you know, changing up my pens and I did go through all of my pens. I have not done a Villa Beautiful de-stash yet, mainly because I was concerned about de-stashing prematurely. And 
I do have it down to what matches this particular cover. The importance of that being I am right now in Planner Nirvana. So when you saw this start, I was toying with discs and I'm pretty sure I already had the half letter. Like I've been an A5 user forever before this. So I was trying to use A5. I think I had already segued into half letter. I cannot remember if I was in half letter before or after I started with pocket, but I did get my first pocket planner with, which was the Louis Vuitton, but it was meant to be very slim, held very little, and I was using it as a wallet, which I do want to use my little pocket planner as a wallet. So from there, I segued into a more inexpensive 30 millimeter planner that I got ring bound pocket planner that I got from Etsy. And while I really liked it, there were some things about the, the planner itself that I did not like and would have changed. And then I sort of segued away and went to the mini HP and uh, the mini HP and going back and forth between mini HP and half letter discs meandered into the A5 zone all the while going back and forth in pocket as well and really over the last year going back and forth between planners with the exception of the A5. I think the A5 has just never really worked for me or given me what I wanted. I like the half letter disc option more. My half letter discs have one and a half inch discs my Notique Mini HP planner cover goes up to 1.75 inch discs, but I have inch and a half discs in there. That seems to give me all of the space I need. I do have 30 millimeter rings in my A5 planners, or not A5, okay. Sorry, I'm looking at too many things over my shoulder. In my A6, planners, which worked just fine for me. It was a non-issue. And then the 30 millimeter pockets were okay. I have, I have two different ones. I have also have one from Naya Papery, but the one from Naya Papery is less tight than this and moved around a lot. And I would like, things would just get damaged in my bag and it, it kind of became a problem for me. So, okay. That was where I was at. I wasn't really a fan of the layout. I've got my Vanderspeck custom A6, which I like. I wish I would not have widened it. I thought about it. I saw other people saying, you really don't need to widen this, but I didn't want the pen to hit the side tabs. I was using side tabs in there, even though I primarily like bottom tabs just because of how things sit on my desk. It's a thing. It's okay. I'm fine with it. But I also want, liked the TM to back color from Vander Speck. And a little bit on this journey, I really hemmed and hawed. And there were some pictures of this where I think the lighting might have done a disservice to this particular planner. So it came back in stock and I was hemming and hawing and just really hoping it would kind of go out of stock and I could quit thinking about it. But I really like the color. I prefer a warmer color for my planner. I just, I do. And I also prefer saddle type tones, which can run the gamut from warmer and cooler, all, all depending on that good stuff. So I took a chance and I picked this guy up. So this is my Vanderspec 25 millimeter gold discs. I have some stickers in the big back pocket. This is just their standard layout. I did choose the gold discs, which is an addition. The popper remains silver. On those, I have updated my words for the year. I really like, I really like this zipper pouch. So I briefly had and sold a Moterm, but their it was their their leather was much squishier and just didn't have the same structure. There is no stiffener in here, but the leather itself and the way it is constructed is relatively stiff. So it works very nicely to me and it just, it works better. It's not as swishy. I don't have the issues that I had with the Moterm. I like it. All right. So that is where we are. Now, something else I have done for the printables that I have and for some of the 
dividers that I have made, I made them pocket plus. It's just a slight upsizing. It's not a huge upsizing, but I have watched a lot of videos talk about how sizing up to pocket plus makes a huge difference in the pocket experience. And in here, pocket plus fits. Pocket plus fits very nicely. with the exception of dividers. I don't think side tabs for dividers would work. I think it would hit the pen and it would be to the edge when you close it. However, I like bottom tabs and I'm happy to do top tabs if I need to. So I'm okay with that because the way I use the planner, and we'll get into that in a second, we'll do a little flip here too, is a little bit different, at least from my perspective. I know some people like really really beautiful, well-labeled, well-done dividers so that they can see everything. I don't necessarily need that, and I have found that I have actually meandered away from that. I don't like generally labeling my tabs because I like to move stuff around and just do things differently every now and then. It, it's how I roll. So this has two secretarial flaps, one in the front, one in the back, and the card slot is in the back, which is where I want it because I want to use it as a wallet. So I really like and enjoy that as well. There is this little slip pocket here. I think I have like a dollar that's just shoved in there. There's nothing really that, that I use that for right now, but I, I might in the future. So my, from cloth and paper, I have the today in the inbox. And then from May Paper Co, I do have the 2021 that you are seeing. These are sized for pocket. I really wish, and maybe I should, maybe I should just email customer service for cloth and paper and just be like, Pocket Plus, please, Pocket Plus, because I literally, I already want to buy the 2022 stuff. I know the setup that I want. Like, again, I have hit Planner Nirvana and I have, I am just like, I am done testing and sampling for a hot minute because I am so comfortable with the setup that I have. So what I start with, and I've got some stickers in here. I'm not going to list out everywhere they're from. I have videos on that already. Uh, this is a freebie from Squizzleberry here for the add to planner section. And then I forget where I picked this up from, but that's just, that is just a, a little yearly calendar for reference. I, I saw this, I forget who, I've seen a couple people now who, who put stickers over the months as they pass. And I really like that idea because it, it gives you just a little bit of of something sweet. And this is actually, these stickers are all from the June Villa Beautiful kit. And I actually threw the rest of the, the remaining stickers are enough for the whole year in the back. So I have them. And then I just have a little something I was reminding myself. This is from Shop Brooklyn Grace on Etsy. I have two of these. I, when I pulled my pocket, I actually had this guy in the wrong pocket for storage. And I'm, <laughs> oops, and I actually ended up having to order a second one because I really liked it and then I couldn't find it. And then I found it, but it works out because I actually needed two. I have my, so this was purchased in pocket size. Where did I purchase this from? Again, I, I gotta start marking the companies down on the side when I do this, or at least I don't have a, I don't have a list in here where some of this stuff is from. So I, I apologize for that, but this is from Etsy. It is a printable. I did size it up. I messed up when I sized it up. I started cutting it using the guidelines instead of using the measurements on my cutter. That is the only reason that this is not actually pocket plus size. It is pocket plus length, but not width because I cut it wrong. And I, this was like the second time I had done this. So I'm not, I'm not redoing it because I originally had these as pocket and it just worked better for them to be pocket plus. This is a divider from cloth and paper. I'm not really using these right now. The months will stay in. The months oddly stick out just a little bit more, but this will, this will eventually be replaced by something that is pocket plus. And then I really like this journaling card that I got from cloth and paper. So I threw it in there. You guys have seen that a lot can happen in a year from planner press before. And then I also have my tracker, I sized this up as well. And like a total ding dong, I did the same thing where I used the guidelines instead of, of using the measurements when I cut it. 
So what happens is when you size this up to 105%, it is the right height, wrong width. You need to ignore the width marks and you need to actually measure those bad boys out. And I have a new paper cutter that does that beautifully. I just, I didn't. So when I get through this and the next one will be good. Now, here is where I cut it properly. You can see a guideline right here. And it gave me actually a nice margin to punch for the period tracker that is the right size. Um, if, if you see that, just a, a lady issue. I am almost 40 and I have noticed a significant uptick around the time of the month in urgency and migraines. And I think it's hormone driven. That's something to talk to the doctor about. This aesthetic card, this is something, this is a freebie I got in an order from cloth and paper. I really liked it. I didn't want to punch the side because I didn't want it to eat into the A. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to punch the blank space and just have it stick out and be an overlay. I really like that. I'm, I'm down with that. And then I just have my 2021 quarterly tracker. I really like this in terms of just setting out some things to remind myself, hey, hey you, this is what we want to focus on this month. And if I want to do any summary notes, I had a pretty, I was getting pretty detailed in a prior, in a prior size, but I didn't really want to transfer all that over because I didn't want to change it up. So that is what that is. And then I just added some stickers for some deco from other places that make me happy quote thing that I wrote and then I do have this gold tracker for this was a freebie from the planner spot I really like this goals here because it's not really a tracker I also did not cut that very well so that's that's on me but uh what I keep saying but ah uh, that I, mm, I ever have merch maybe that's what I should have so the whole goal of this is to actually think of the tasks that you can do daily, weekly, or monthly to move you towards your goals. And then I have, this is from Peanuts Planner Co. I've seen these used as two days on one page. I actually don't like planning that way. I thought it would be a good place for like a brain dump or ideas and to just kind of write things down, maybe for some journaling type stuff. I don't know. And then I put some, just some stickers on them. So that they would work great and I'm going to apologize. I forgot to reset my overhead light so it wouldn't go off at a timed period. And then I have the months. In the future, I think I will only do two months in here. This is actually getting pretty, pretty packed for me. I don't like it way overloaded just because it opening and closing it, it starts to create issues. So that's, that's a my thing. So I've got the things going on that are big in my life. Some notes if you want to do some notes or I just put something pretty there and then I start with the horizontal weeklies. I really love this layout and I did look closely at cloth and papers predated 2022 and that is actually split into four boxes instead of three so that you can have the entire month. I have some things that I'm tracking and some things that I am doing and that is what is on there. This particular guy here I just used some stickers that I had for deco. I like stickers on it. I don't like it to be completely see-through necessarily. So just some some cutesy little things. I like the size of it. It also starts as a top as a top tab, but I like it as a bottom tab. So that's just why I did it that way. I just flipped it around. I like the size of this. I thought I was gonna like the Brooklyn Grace a little bit more, but in terms of the planner part, I actually like the size so I can, you know, throw down stickies and have them on there completely and reminders. And I, I don't know, there's just something about it that in here I like it more in my other planners. I preferred the the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Grace. Um, talent and development, that's, that's something I'm trying to work into, into a series and I just, I kept, trying to do some inspirational stuff. I'm trying to get into some more, you know, just some more getting fit stuff. We've talked about this in some other videos. I'm not gonna belabor a point. I do have a no buy tracker for August. I am going to work very, very hard with the exception of two things that I already know about that are like pre-planned. But just, I've kind of been, again, on a tear. I, I go through this where I do really well with, with you know, let's not shop, let's not buy. And then I seem to hit like a point where it's like just a barrage and then it's not. And that really seems to be my pattern. So I don't know if what's happening is 
somewhere in my brain I'm like flipping out because like I do really, 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 really well with editing my wants and not purchasing everything that I want on knee-jerk reaction to wanting to purchase everything. I have a feeling what is happening is as I'm talking myself out of things, I'm not really talking myself out of things. What I'm doing is almost like shaming myself, I think is a good way to describe it, into not purchasing things. So what ends up happening is, yes, there are purchases that I end up not making all together and really do edit, which is great. But then there are purchases that I was never going to talk myself out of or never intended to talk myself out of. And then I just end up with this all at once sort of situation. So I'm trying to avoid that. And I'm trying to see if maybe I can do some better editing of what do I really want and making some smarter choices. Some of the stuff is hindsight too. I mean, I'm just going to be really honest there. And I think that's a good thing about looking back on purchases. And I decided for August just here on the front to just put some inspirational words. And these are cloth and paper inserts here. And then I've got the month and things I need to remember to do. And I really, I really, I am just loving this, this layout and how this looks. So that's what we've got through September. And September to me is this part of fall. I know it's not to everybody, but pumpkins and everything, just leaves and color changing goodness. Are in there. And then we get to my financial section here. So I really like this and I'm gonna leave that in there. I actually, this is nice and structured. So it's two pieces of scrapbook paper that are thicker. And that means the sky, which I really love, holds on very, 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 very nicely. And then I have this from Caffeine and Paper Co. Their Etsy, which I cut out, which I printed and cut out. So this is the Dear Planner God's Prayer. I felt like I need this. And then I am doing my wish list. Got to do a what I trust list. And then we start getting, this marks off my financial section. This guy here is also a printout from Caffeine and Paper Co. I really like this. I have this in two of my other planners. It is a favorite. And then we hit my notes section. I'm trying to work on a my, I'm still trying to work on a my day. There, there is no ideal my day. I mean, there, there just isn't. And then after the notes section, we get into a personal section and a work section which I'm not going to flip into. And I do have a page lifter from Planner Press. I did order a page lifter that will be pocket plus size because Planner Press had those. I think I might use that in the front. I don't know. I'm really torn because I love the crystal clear inbox actually from cloth and paper over the today because it, today is just a little bit muffled in terms of, of tone. It's, it's slightly frosted. So so is this guy. So I'm going to assume the planner, the planner, the pocket plus will be as well. But my hope, my hope is, is that maybe if I use that in the front, then I can protect the, the clear inbox because the clear inbox, I'm afraid I'm just going to scratch the daylights out of. And then I have a back pocket for the back secretarial here that I am using for all of the things that, you know, probably I'm gonna completely forget are in there. This pocket is great for holding my square flags here. I just have them in nude and then my cards, which is awesome. And then this planner actually redeemed this pen. I really like this. So this is the Villa Beautiful Obsidian. I was really sad because I wanted to use it, but it just doesn't seem to go with anything. And the tone is different than the other gray pens that I like, but when I, when I put it out with the planner, it just seems to go with it so well. Like the gray is the right tone to go with the, the warm color here. The stones are the perfect color to go in, in with it. And it just worked out so nicely. And then something else. So there were a couple other pens I really didn't want to let go. I think this is the VB number five, which looks beautiful. That will be so stunning in the fall. Let me tell you, yes, this is the way my brain works. Like literally, this is, this, this is it that you're seeing. 
All right. And then this guy, like, look at that. Like, look at that. How, how is that not? It's Planner Bay, which I was going to declutter. How, how is that not gorgeous with this, though? And then Monstera is something else I was going to declutter again. I've got to go back to the declutter video. But I like that, and I think that will be a good October pen for me. That is definitely a good Halloween pen. And then Wildflower, which is just a good springtime pen. I was really tickled that it matched this. I really like this pen. I couldn't let it go. And now I know why. It matches that planner. Freckled kisses. Look at that. Look at that. We just, yes. I'm going to actually put that one in there right now. I've been thinking about that since I pulled it back out. And then a new day. I really like with that as well. Again, very spring and bright because the pens, so I have like eight that I was really set on and wanted to make sure that like, felt like my collection was complete. It's not, we're, we're all a little bit aerial. If you like this stuff. But again, I there were some of these pens which are still available on Villa Beautiful's website or had just gone off that, that I couldn't necessarily declutter. Those I put back in the declutter box because I will declutter them eventually. But I just have things that I'm just not in a place where I'm ready to let them go. And I'm not going to let stuff go prematurely because then I'm going to miss it and I'm going to want to repurchase it. And we're not going to create that kind of environment here. So that is, that is the goings on. And I have a feeling I am going to be in this planner for a good long time because I just feel comfortable and at ease with it. And I have not felt that way with any of the other planners, the covers, the setup. And I just, I don't know how else to describe it. I love it. And I'm having a little bit of planner nirvana. So I am going to bask in that. I'm going to bask in taking this with me and being fully portable and loving it. Planners are hard because they are per they are very personal preference. So on that note, I'm going to leave you guys here. Much love and appreciation. If you are on a journey of self-discovery, whether it's planner related, fitness related, finance related, look, they all go hand in hand. And I find they all tend to work together. Drop something in the comments, you know, any anything, <laughs> anything that I can share that will help motivate you or inspire you or have you just cringe and be like, yeah, things I'm not going to do. I'm delighted to be here to bring you that. So much love and catch you in the next one.